All right, what's going on guys? So, a few more things that I wanted to talk about in relation to this whole stance rant. You know, I you know, originally thought it was gonna be one video, but this is uh, part four. There's just more and more things I, I keep thinking about that um, you know, I just wanna share with you guys. So number one, talked a little bit in the last video about philosophy, right? Being goal oriented. So, as you saw from the Archie Moore quote, um, that's kind of my goal for this channel is I want to, you know, I'll give some technique tips and stuff like that. But in general, I want you guys to start thinking about the philosophy, you know, be more goal oriented. Like these techniques are in place to help you achieve a goal, right? To win your boxing match, to protect yourself, to protect someone else, okay? These are the goals. So these techniques are, you know, they help you achieve that goal. So in general, we want to think about the philosophy. We don't want to get too wrapped up in these minute little details. It's the goal that we're, that we're aiming to achieve that's more important, okay? So again, kind of think like wrestling. You know, wrestlers are taught a, a single leg or a double leg. They're taught a technique. But the coaching in wrestling is more goal-oriented, meaning they're more concerned about executing the technique, getting the takedown, as opposed to doing it perfect, okay? So that's kind of that's kind of the whole, like, philosophy that I also have in relation to boxing. That, you know, just over time, I kind of started to realize that, you know, I do things differently than everybody else, and then... You know, I, I didn't really fight that. I kind of just accepted it like, yeah, because everybody has their own style, right? Two, uh, one trainer teaches two guys the same thing, and they're going to apply it completely differently. And that's okay, right? That's what makes this stuff cool, right? Every person has their own individual influences, and they're going to develop their own style over time, okay? <clears throat> so I've studied, you know, I've trained... A lot of different things other than boxing i just boxing is my favorite right i didn't know that at first i grew up watching boxing you know but then as i got older you know i was really into ufc right so i first started training i was training muay thai and and from there you know i thought well if i get my hands really good and understand boxing i'll be really good at muay thai so i started training boxing and i kind of fell in love with it and I realized that, like, to me, it's like the foundation of fighting, okay? You got to know how to use your hands. You got to have good head movement, right? Good footwork and all that stuff, it comes from boxing, okay? So for me, I, you know, I, I kind of, like, rediscovered my love for boxing, right? My, I grew up watching it. My dad, it's, like, really the only sport he watched was boxing. I grew up loving it, loving Rocky movies, right? I didn't really care about any other sports. I like boxing and, you know, action movies, martial arts, kung fu movies, right? And as I got older, you know, I got really into UFC, MMA, right? Pride. I loved pride, okay? I kind of rediscovered boxing from there, okay? Okay. And like I talked in the last video, most fighters that, you know, I see most fighters fighting from a semi-bladed stance, right? When people think of boxing, especially someone who's never boxed, they think of, you know, someone standing super bladed and they might be, they might think they just throwing jabs and really pitter patter kind of punches and moving away. Like, I think that's what most people kind of think of when they think of boxing. But like I was saying, most people stand semi-bladed, okay? So that directly translates to a self-defense situation. If you're directly, if you're standing semi-bladed, that stance easily transfers to a self-defense situation, okay? You got really good balance. You can grapple, you know, you can grapple really good from the stance. You got elbows, knees, kicks, front kicks, right? All that right here from this semi-square stance, right? And you'll notice, you know, start paying attention. To the, you know your favorite fighters most of the time they fight is probably going to be from the semi semi square stance okay so another thing you know you see people talk about a lot of people 
kind of criticized boxing and saying like it's just you know it's just punching or right? people even saying like it wouldn't work in a self-defense situation which is, which is crazy because if you think about it you know you need the head movement you're gonna have to know how to defend punches like how are you gonna fight if you don't know how to use your hands and you know like i'm saying most people most boxers fight from a semi-bladed stance so they're already in this kind of self-defense stance it doesn't take much you know, to turn this into a grappling stance, to use a front kick, right? You don't have to know all these crazy round and spinning kicks and, you know, you have a good front kick from this stance and you have good hands, you have good wrestling. I mean, that's, that's what you need in a self-defense situation, okay? Okay. So from this semi-bladed stance, I feel like I have really good balance. I can move in pretty much any direction I want very smoothly. I feel really, you know, my hands and feet are really locked in and I have really good balance. There's just a lot of benefits that I really like from it. If someone tries to get me off balance in this position because of the movement I have, because I'm comfortable from orthodox or southpaw, right? It's harder to get me off balance because I'm able to adjust more. Anywhere the opponent goes to try to get me off balance and I can change my position and my feet are pretty much always set to defend or attack, okay? Think about Terrence Crawford, all right? He has a wrestling background. He's, he fights from both stances. You know, it's going to be really hard for someone to off balance somebody like that. It's going to be really hard to corner somebody like that, okay? If he gets in a situation where someone is stronger than him and is able to push him, push forward against him when he doesn't want them to, it's going to be hard to corner somebody who can move and fight from both stances, okay? Okay. And then the last kind of point I wanted to reemphasize, uh, I talked a little bit about discipline in the last video. So I want you guys to think about, do you have the discipline, Okay. To get good at this, anything, to get good at anything, you have to put time into it, okay? So to get good at boxing, you have to put time into studying individual techniques for days at a time, all right? So think about it. You know, your coach tells you to work on something, you want to work on that, but you, there's other things that you need to work on as well, right? You're going to have to work on your balance, your coordination, uh, your rhythm, right? You're going to have to work on fighting out of bladed stances, orthodox southpaw, square stance, orthodox southpaw, semi-bladed, and mixing it all together, all right? <clears throat> so the question is, do you have the discipline to set up some kind of schedule, get a notebook, keep track of what do you want to work on each week? And, you know, you're going to have to practice this kind of stuff you don't have to do it at the gym. You can do it at home. I recommend doing some of this stuff at home because your coach might flip out if you start practicing practicing things southpaw, all right? Some coaches don't want you to do that, but you know you have to use your own judgment. You are responsible for your learning. You're responsible for your safety. This is the kind of stuff you know that can save your life, that can help you save someone else's life, all right? That's the whole point of the self-defense as aspect of this, okay? It's not to be some tough guy and bully people, you know, it's to build the confidence so that you remain calm, so that you're able to remain situationally aware to get yourself and the people you care about out of a dangerous situation, okay? So back to the discipline, right? You gotta have discipline to set up some kind of schedule, you know, a weekly schedule, so you wanna work on a, a specific punch or a specific technique, okay? Let's say uh, your head movement. So you're gonna to have to come home from the gym or every morning and you're gonna to have to put on a, a, you know, a timer or a, some music and say, okay, this entire song, I'm gonna work my rolls on the slip line the whole time, right? From the orthodox stance and the next song, South paw, slip line, right? Standing still, right? Work your technique standing still. 
work them from a completely squared up stance. I got tons of videos talking about that, right? Especially for beginners. All these techniques, everything you should learn from a completely squared up, completely squared up stance, right? You got to get the balance and the coordination of the movements down first. When you start moving around, you'll naturally start to get in a more, you know, traditional kind of fight stance. But you got to learn your balance first. Stationary, standing still before you start moving around, okay? So even if you're not a beginner, this will help you get out of your plateau where you just hit a, you know, where you're just not improving anymore, okay? That's what's going to make you better, right? You got to have good balance and coordination, right? Okay, so that's why you got to have the discipline to do these things. And you got to do it for a long period of time. And it's got to be multiple days in a row, right? So you do like a week where you set aside some time, you know, 10, 15 minutes where you just work on one technique straight. There's tons of different drills you, you can do, but you want to just make sure you're working that technique for that 10, 15 minutes straight, okay? You got to have the discipline to do this, right? It's not hard to do. It's not hard to do, but it takes discipline. And I, rem I recall Mike, you know, you know, practicing for, for long, sustained periods of time, 10, 15 minutes in the mirror, just throwing like one, the right uppercut or left hook, just over and over and over. Mike Tyson, when he was, you know, when he was young and they were just, they were they blown away because he would sit in the mirror and practice one punch for like 10 minutes straight. And that used to freak people out, right? They'd be like, what? He's crazy. He's just doing what, you know? But that's how you get good, right? You got to get these, these movements need to become natural. They need to become second nature, right? And then they become instinctual. That's what you want, right? You don't want to have to think about how to set your weight or how to get in position to land a technique. You just want to be thinking about landing the technique, the goal, right? That's why this is more philosophy than technique. You learn the techniques and then you apply them and that's your philosophy, right? Oh, this guy, you know, you have, this guy's, whatever your opponent is this much taller than you, you can think, okay, well, I'm gonna have to close the distance, so I'm gonna have to do this, right? I'm gonna have to maybe square up more and be more of a pressure fighter, okay? But that's where the philosophy comes in. So you gotta learn the techniques to the point where you don't have to think about them, and then you can think about the bigger picture, which is the philosophy, okay? But again, this is gonna take discipline because you know, most people, most coaches are not gonna sit there and make you do something, make you work on one technique over and over and over and over again for 10, 15 minutes straight, okay? You'll get better faster and you'll become a better fighter if you can do these things on your own and you can take responsibility for your learning, okay? So try it out. There's tons of drills all over YouTube. I got videos, other people got videos, you know, pick ones you like, but um, set aside the time to work on different techniques and do it each week, change to a new one, okay? So that you master these techniques so you're not just you know, really good at this one, okay at this one, blah, blah, blah. You wanna start mastering all the techniques. And in boxing, there's not that many, okay? But that's what set boxing apart is people master them so well that they become like supernatural, <laughs> right? They have super instinct and, you know, it, it's just the, the levels to it are insane, right? There's levels to this and it's really crazy to think about how much the levels change the better you get okay so try it out like the video sub the channel peace